So coming in at number five, we got somebody that might surprise you, but honestly, he has been on my mind for a while now, mostly because Patrick Mahomes just got his contract and whatnot. Deshaun Watson. His full name is Eric, actually Derek Deshaun Watson. So Deshaun is his middle name, apparently. I, I didn't know that until I had to uh, pull up his file and whatnot. But Deshaun Watson, the quarterback for the Houston Texans, taken at round one 12th overall in the 2017 draft i believe he was the third quarterback selected after mitch trubisky and patrick mahomes but we all know the story on deshaun watson you know third quarterback taken in 2017 draft his rookie year before he went down with an acl injury he had possibly he was on track to actually have one of the best quarterback rookie years in nfl history the guy looked like an absolute stud came in and just essentially thrown into the fire and knew immediately what to do he adjusted really well to the nfl style offense adjusted really well to the texans and their terrible offensive line just absolutely showed out and played at the same level that he was playing in college deshaun for the most part before Mahomes' breakout year in 2018 and then of course his super bowl win in 2019 looked to be the best quarterback out of the 2017 draft class and as of right now in my opinion he is a top five quarterback in the nfl and i hope he could stay healthy and continue to be that for the next 10 to 15 years and whatnot but there is something that Deshaun needs to prove and he's not gonna get help I'll admit that right now the dude exactly hasn't had the greatest help being on the Houston Texans now you could say all you want about Bill O'Brien and I have a lot to say about Bill O'Brien the guy in my opinion is a terrible general manager and as a head coach has only you know his head coaching abilities has only decreased which each year that, that the Texans have moved on it seems each year that they progress it seems like Bill O'Brien is getting more and more inept at his job however despite all that even without Deshaun there people do forget he was getting the Texans into the playoffs and the Texans were getting a good enough record to either make the playoffs or miss it by probably one game or so so he was doing something right and uh, I have to give some credit to him I, I really don't want to but the quarterback coach duo of Deshaun and been to the playoffs uh him and bill o'brien two out of the three years deshaun has been in the nfl with the only exception being his rookie year and i assure you if deshaun stayed healthy the texans probably would have gone to the playoffs that year now uh they've done it seems they've taken the right steps to try and help and fix that offensive line they finally got actually one of the best left tackles in the league out there pre protecting deshaun it still has a way to go but it is much improved their defense for the most part while it has gotten older is really the only main knock i can put on it it is still a very good texans defense and of course the biggest thing was that they traded away deshaun watson's biggest weapon in deandre hopkins which was an ultimately stupid move that i can't defend but he still has a okay group of receivers to throw to now this is what deshaun has to prove this year and i know he's not going to get any help but uh, considering where he is in the quarterback rankings and considering what he's done in the regular season with you know average texans teams and whatnot he needs to prove that he can make it in the playoffs the way the nfl is moving younger and young quarterbacks are doing things a lot earlier in their careers than you would expect and deshaun needs to show that he can win some playoff games he is currently one and two in the playoffs and i'll throw up his stats right now of course the closest he came to getting to the afc championship was just last year when he went up against his draft mate in patrick mahomes and the uh, Texans had a great lead on them in the first quarter and seemed to be doing things right and then things collapsed right after that and Deshaun once again being one and two in the playoffs he has not really made it that far into the playoffs so far and the thing is you don't want to end up being labeled as just a regular season guy you know guys like uh Philip Rivers and other quarterbacks who were really good in the regular season but when it comes to postseason time they don't really do much I completely believe that Deshaun has the ability to do so but he has yet to show it hopefully this is the year he does have that playoff breakout type season and rises above the rest um especially above the challenges he will have being on a Bill O'Brien Texan team but if there's any year to do it it would be this one the AFC South as of right now there's only really one other competitor in there that is the Indianapolis Colts I know the Titans were just the AFC South champions but they're going to be relying heavily on Derrick Henry to have a repeat type season if they even want to have a record that they had last year the defense was good but it was carried by Derrick Henry and the Jags seem to be in some sort of rebuild mode your only competition in that division seems to be the Indianapolis Colts quarter quarterbacked by a really old Philip Rivers so Deshaun you kind of don't have an excuse moving on to the next quarterback on this list somebody in a very similar situation in terms of what they need to prove Josh Allen quarterback 
40 Buffalo Bills. Taken at the seventh overall pick in the 2018 draft, Allen was kind of the late bloomer of the quarterbacks that came on very late in the offseason. Really exploded onto the scene and rose up draft boards after his great combine day. And a lot of people at the time in 2018 were wondering where would he rank amongst the five quarterbacks taken. Not that many would have thought he would end up and would end up being, uh, as of right now, the second or third best quarterback out of that draft. And something that he's already proven himself as a franchise player, as a you know qualified starting quarterback in the NFL. But Allen does still have quite a bit to prove. Now I did say he has. A kind of a similar situation to what Deshaun Watson is in and what I meant by that is the only thing that's similar is that Allen has to prove himself in the playoffs as in his one playoff appearance it was a loss to the Houston Texans um, and they were actually a pretty evenly matched when he considered them team wise the Bills they have a great defense one of the best in the NFL um, definitely top five and their offense it's not one of the best, but it is above average and above average Bills offense going up against a very similarly built Texans team came up short. But before we even get there, Allen, in my opinion, has not proved himself to be a franchise quarterback yet because the dude has a lot to improve when it comes to just being a quarterback in general. His fundamentals, you talk about throwing mechanics, Josh Allen does not have any type of accuracy at all when throwing from the pocket. For some reason, it seems that he's most accurate when he's on the run and under pressure. Very weird to see from a quarterback. I can't remember any quarterback that had a similar type of, uh, I don't know, habit or um, a similar type of production when it comes to stuff like that, like Josh Allen. When he's in the pocket, he's absolutely atrocious. And actually, you look at his completion percentage from last year, 58.8 completion percentage, and even the yard total, only 3,089 yards as a full-time starting quarterback. And this was on a playoff caliber Buffalo Bills team. That just doesn't add up. In addition to that, his touchdown numbers 20 to 9 interceptions. So not only is he not accurate to the point where he has below 60% per uh, percentage of completions, He's not as effective as he should be in the red zone when it comes to passing. Now, of course, rushing is a big part of Allen's game. But when you only have 3,000 yards passing, you would expect something like a 1,000-yard rushing season, similar to those of Lamar Jackson and Russell Wilson in the past. But in 2019, the guy only had 109 rushing attempts for 510 rushing yards for a total of around 3,500 offensive yards, which is not something you want from your starting quarterback. And even when it came to rushing touchdowns, Allen posted just nine rushing touchdowns. Well, when you say, when I do say it like that, it doesn't sound that bad. Nine is a lot for a total of 29 total touchdowns, but I want my quarterback to be doing better. And remember how I spoke about Allen and uh, the 3,000 passing yards, how that's disappointing for him? Not only the starting quarterback, but when you consider that the one of the best things about Allen, not only his running ability, but the fact that he has an absolute cannon for an arm. He only averaged about six and a half air yards per passing attempt. Of course, the air yards are measured as um, the actual distance the ball travels through the air, and you would expect it to be a bit more than six and a half when you have an arm like that. But if you don't want to go off of that, you can go off of the fact that the Buffalo Bills ranked 26th in NFL offense last year per pro football reference. And just going off of regular yards gained per passing attempt, they were 21st in the NFL. So not something very good from your quarterback there. And now, of course, the next thing would be he needs to prove himself in the playoffs. The fact is, is that Allen is with a great Buffalo Bills team, and now he has more help than ever on the offensive side, considering that they just traded for Stephon Diggs. He now has a legit number one wide receiver, and in total, a good wide receiving core there in Buffalo, a good running back core, an all right offensive line, an absolutely great head coach, and a great defense. Playing in an AFC East where your only competition was the New England Patriots and up until Cam Newton signed there you guys were by far the favorites because you had the best team on paper your only comp is still the Patriots and you should still win that division considering that you have a way better team than them let me give you the benefit of the doubt and say that you don't for some reason you should still be in the playoffs and you should still travel at least you know one game in past the wild card round and not get knocked out at the wild card round that's what Allen has to prove the next quarterback on the list is somebody that I love to talk about. That is Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys. Man, listen, I think everybody knows what's up here with Dak, man. Dak is definitely entering another prove-it year, which if you're a Cowboys fan, you would say is crazy. 
considering that he almost had 5,000 passing yards with 30 touchdowns last year not exactly trying to prove himself as a regular season quarterback no 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 no, no. that enters a proving year because he's trying to get a certain amount of money and a new contract and in my opinion he's earned a new contract i don't know if he's earned what he is demanding though and not only does he have to prove himself for that but he has to prove that he can actually win with the dallas cowboys which is a strange thing to say because uh for the past two years or so including this upcoming season the Dallas Cowboys have been one of the most talented rosters in the NFL and going into next season in my opinion in terms of just pure talent both on the offensive and defensive side they should be a top five team but it's a question as to whether or not they're even going to make the playoffs because of the performance of Dak Prescott you talk about last year they went eight and eight with a 5,000 yard you know what let me give the exact stat 4,902 yard 30 touchdown 11 interception quarterback 65.1 percent completion percentage and Dak has always been consistent with that he's always been one of the best in the NFL when it comes to um, completion percentages coupled with a stellar running game in Zeke Elliott 1300 rushing yards that amazing Dallas Cowboys offensive line a good wide receiving core that just became great with the addition of CD Lamb and a good defense to back you up with a pass rush that can get to the quarterback on a consistent basis and they went 8-8 eight and eight in a weak NFC East division, missing the playoffs. Dak certainly has a lot to prove. I think since he came into the NFL, he's had a lot to prove, whether you consider it fair or not. But it was because of the fact that he was a fourth-round quarterback thrown into probably the best situation you could be thrown into as a rookie quarterback, and he had immediate success. People questioned it, and rightfully so, because you got you to gotta realize, you got to think about how much of that was Dak and how much of that was just the great surrounding team around him. And it seems like last year, it was the team surrounding him because no matter how great he did, he just couldn't win certain games when it came down to it. No matter what his stats say, and stats don't always tell the story, no matter what the picture is painted by his numbers, you get down into it. The Cowboys went 8-8, eight and eight, and there was games they could have won, games where your quarterback is supposed to step up. Games that make your quarterback your quarterback, that make you realize this is the franchise dude that Dak absolutely squandered last year. And if he won them, they would have been in the playoffs and God knows how far they would have went. You talk about games like the Saints in week four, a one score game. The Jets, the Jets, not even a good team, but they lost to the Jets in a one score game. The Patriots in a one score game. These are games where Dak had to step up and take over as the franchise quarterback and take over that game and he needs to prove that he can do that this season because listen in my opinion i don't think he's in the future plans of the cowboys but if he wants to prove himself as a franchise player whether it's for the cowboys or for another team and if he wants to prove himself to be worth 40 million dollars he has to do these things so coming in at number two the next quarterback on the list is new york jets quarterback sam darnold third overall pick in the 2018 draft sam darnold that is of course Inevitably connected to my favorite team, New York Giants, both to Saquon Barkley because they were in that same draft back-to-back -back picks. And of course, he's going to be continuously compared to Daniel Jones, the quarterback that the Giants took in the following year's draft. And so, of course, I do. I think I know quite a bit when it comes to Sam Darnold and in terms of what he has to prove here since he's playing right in the same, in the same city as my Giants. And listen, I got to preface it by saying... He has not been dealt a right hand with the Jets, man. Terrible offensive line. The offensive line is bad. I mean, his weapons, aside from Robbie Anderson the past couple years, not exactly that many weapons. The running game, even when they tried to fix it by signing the former best running back in the NFL, Le'Veon Bell, did not really improve that much. The defense, despite all of the signings in 2018, did not have as much of an impact as they hoped it would. So the 2018 season, his rookie year was just kind of went down the drain the 2019 season not much better he was out with a mono for god knows how many weeks uh, not even a physical injury but mono like the the sickness i guess you could say it's not something exactly to think about when you think about a quarterback sitting out a couple of weeks and then his in his return game against the patriots he was seeing ghosts i mean it's kind of been a perfect storm of of the worst things that could happen for sam darnold in his first two years in the nfl but he still, just because it's been a perfect storm doesn't mean he gets an excuse and he gets a pass. Especially when one of Darnold's biggest problems is quarterback mechanics, throwing mechanics. The guy has terrible, terrible throwing mechanics. He almost always, when looking at the film, 
throws off of his back foot, never steps into these throws, and almost always stares down the receiver he's throwing to and just looks scared in the pocket. He always looks frantic and scared in the pocket, which I think kind of plays into why he never steps into his throw and thus never fully delivers the throw that he truly should be delivering. And this is one of the reasons you kind of have people split on Darnold. There's like half of the people that think that he has a good amount of talent, but he just can't access it right now, which definitely would play into Adam Gase. And I don't know how he's still the Jets head coach. And there's the other half that just think he's a bad quarterback and he's a bust. I'm kind of in the middle because I, like I said, with the preface, I said, um, you can't exactly put everything on the guy, but he is supposed to be that franchise quarterback and he's supposed to be able to overcome at least some of these things and he's overcome none of these things now he is entering his third year and my opinion on uh, nfl players in general not just quarterbacks is that by their third year you know what you got in them their first year their rookie year that really could go either way they could have a great one but it could be one and done they could have a terrible one it could be one and done the rookie year purely experimentation their sophomore year that second year it's really where they start to adjust to the nfl on a real-time basis because now defenses have had a year to adjust to them so they have to adjust to the defenses and their third year after you know the little bit of extra experimentation in the second year maybe they take a step forward maybe they took a step back the third year is where they level out and i think you have the player that you're gonna have for the rest of their career donald is entering his third year and he certainly needs to level out and perform better than he did in his first two way better than he did in um 2019 with only 3,000 passing yards 19 touchdowns to 13 interceptions a horrendous touchdown to interception ratio not much improved from his 17 touchdown 15 interception rookie year and Darnold needs to start winning he cannot continue to lead losing Jets teams you know what I mean this is in the old NFL where you give quarterbacks a lot more time than they have right now you know where they sit they and because of the fact that they sit they have more time to adjust they come in and you give them maybe four or five years to get the job done that doesn't happen anymore quarterbacks don't sit anymore and part of the reason they don't sit and part of the reason that teams don't give them as much time as they used to is because they're coming into the nfl more and more prepared and more and more ready to play this professional level of football and if darnold just isn't ready to play the professional level of football then he's not going to be with the jets any longer he's going to need to do something to prove them wrong this year whether it's by showing it through a winning season or showing it through improved mechanics and just having a good personal season Darnold does have a lot to prove and coming in at number one on the list I think somebody that a lot of people expected to be on here I had to put him at number one Baker Mayfield the number one overall pick out of the 2018 draft the one person that a lot of people thought would have been the best quarterback coming out of that draft and after his rookie year his record-breaking rookie year by the way everybody thought he was going to be the best especially with what he was set up with with the Cleveland Browns you talk about not only him coming into Cleveland and seeming to be the first winning quarterback there in God knows how long with the way he ended off his rookie season after um, Hugh Jackson was let go and Freddie Kitchens was, was made the interim, I think it was Greg Williams actually, was made the interim head coach and Freddie Kitchens was the offensive coordinator. Whatever the case is, Baker ended off that 2018 rookie campaign in a stellar fashion, almost winning the rookie of the year honors, but definitely looked like the best rookie quarterback out of the bunch and then in the offseason the Browns do nothing but honestly right things they um they added Odell Beckham Jr. from the Giants to their team added Kareem Hunt in the running back room added a good number two pass rusher in Olivier Vernon to play alongside Miles Garrett along with other moves that improved the team overall but we all know where it went downhill the fact that they suffered and they uh, made their offensive line suffer as a result of that Olivier Vernon trade the fact that they got Freddie Kitchens from within to make him the head coach somebody that was not ready to take on that responsibility and that mantle and the fact that Baker Mayfield simply fumbled the football and did not run with it as he should have with this team led them to have the, the disastrous 2019 season that they did have Baker with an enormous sophomore slump 3,827 passing yards, 22 touchdowns, 21 interceptions, 59.4 completion percentage in 2019. A worse season by far than his 2018 rookie season where he had 3,725 passing yards, 27 touchdowns to just 14 interceptions, and 63.8 per uh, completion percentage. It makes no sense that Mayfield performed so terribly 
in this stellar Browns offense and honestly a really good Browns team. Their defense super underrated. And then in addition to that, you add in the fact that the dude is absolutely terrible off the field with the media. He can't control his emotions when talking to the media. He's very easily riled up and honestly has some of the worst interviews I've ever seen by any NFL player. And he has to 100% improve that. It, at first, it looked like, you know, it was just some bravado. People were kind of cheering him on saying that, ah, yeah, he doesn't really, you know, take anything from the media. He doesn't take the criticism. But now it just looks like he honestly is not mature enough to handle it and mature enough to formulate good responses to it. And this is Cleveland. This is the Cleveland media. This is not no big city like LA or New York or even a huge organization like Dallas. This is Cleveland where the media is not one of the hardest to survive in when you consider the sports world. And he's absolutely floundering. So as harsh as it seems to say that for a quarterback, a young quarterback entering his third year, who in 2018 broke rookie records for the quarterback, as harsh as it is to say, the truth of the matter is that this is Baker, Baker Mayfield's make or break year. This is the year he has to prove to the Browns and to the NFL that he is what people thought he was coming out of the draft. He has to not only win, where the case with Sam Darnold, in my opinion, is just show improvement, whether through winning or through personal improvement, Baker has to do both. He's on too, you know, too much of a talent stacked roster to not do both. He has to both win games and potentially get the Browns into the playoffs or get them close to that and show personal improvement. Definitely with getting that completion percentage back up and has to turn down the turnover rates. 21 interceptions is not going to cut it. And then the personal improvement in terms of how he deals with the media, Baker Mayfield is going to have to be a completely different quarterback from what he was last year if he wants to continue to have a career in the NFL. And um, that was my list for you guys. Let me know what you guys think. I, I keep going a little too long with it, and I don't know why. I, I, even though I have it planned out and I'm looking at my time, I always go a little bit too long. But who do you think on this list has the most improved this year? And if there's anybody you would add to it or take off from it, let me know down below. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.